Welcome back. We need to find a way to get James to come get Helena, but just asking him doesn't seem to work. So what else can we try? I don't think talking to Helena again gives you any more hints. Madame Romansky? So, is James... No. That's the same thing she said last time. But she does say ring for her valet. Not just go and get him. And there seems to be a bell over here. Okay. Is he coming? Doesn't seem like it. Guess we're gonna have to ask him. See if he heard it. Puts the mask back, back automatically if you forget. No point weighing myself down. James? James, where are you? I've rung for you several times. Madame Romansky wants you to bring her back inside. Several times, you say? Are you sure? I didn't hear anything. That's right, several times. Quick, go and get her. This really is most tiresome, miss. If the bell really hasn't rung, then I'm going out for nothing. It's the salt wind. Too much, and it'll play havoc with my insides. If you don't mind, I'm going to wait for the bell to ring again. Madame Romansky isn't going to like it. Don't worry, you get used to it. Okay. You're being very helpful, aren't you? I guess that it's too far away and he can't hear? It's not very helpful. Back out we go. Can try to ring it again, but uh, he will not hear it. But there is another place here where it looks like there could be a bell, but there isn't one. That's definitely closer, so he might be able to hear it from there. But since there isn't a bell, we need to go get one. And indeed, we can take this one. Wait, is this what he was... Expecting Helena to do? Move the bell? In which case she's like walked most of the distance there anyway. Or maybe he would have just gone and picked her up at uh, 4.30 anyway. Alright, let's put that here. Ring it again. No reaction. That clock is definitely broken. Let's go ask James. See if he heard it this time. James, what are you waiting for? Don't tell me you didn't hear the bell this time. The bell did indeed ring, but it is very windy outside, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it is a bit gusty. But what's that got to do with it? Madam doesn't understand. 
She says an automaton doesn't need protection, but my insights don't like the salty wind. I'm afraid to go out, you know. And if you wore my mask to protect you against the salt, would that help? Oh, most certainly. Really, is the sand only coming in through your mouth? I would think like it, your joints would be more vulnerable. <phone rings> Meanwhile, a phone call. Katie Pooh. So, have you met her yet? This Helena person. What would she like? Does she remember Frank? Hi, Mom. Yeah, sure. I met her and, yeah, she's living in Arrowbad. You can thank Frank for me again. I'll remember too, honey. So, what's Arrowbad like? Maybe Frank can take me there one day. It's this seaside resort, Ma, but it isn't what it used to be. You'd be real disappointed. Maybe you're right. So, when are you coming home? Is that mission all over then? Not really, Ma. I still haven't found the heir I'm looking for to wrap up the case. Helena Romansky's a kind of detour here. Listen, Munchkin. I get the distinct impression that you're being led up the garden path. Why don't you just come home, tell your boss this air just doesn't exist, that you've done all you can, et voila. Do you want me to call him for you? Ma, please, don't get involved. Looking for Hans Varlberg is what I'm being paid for, but I also just want to find him for myself. Honestly, you're just as stubborn as your father. Don't complain that your mother didn't warn you. Don't worry, I won't. Yeah, at this point, um, we have to complete our mission, I think, regardless of what the lawyers want. Okay, Helena's in sight, so hopefully we can talk to her now. It's a real honor to meet you, Madam Romansky. People have told me so much about you. Mm -hmm. People still talk about me. Oh dear. Of course. Everyone tells me how wonderful you were. How you were one of the greatest singers of the century. Ah, so I was, my dear. But surely you didn't come here just to dig up the past. Well, kind of. Like I said, I'm a lawyer, and to tell you the truth, I don't know much about classical music. But after talking to Mr. Borodine and Mr. Malkovich, they really made me want to hear you. Oh, you are too late, my child. Ten years too late. And how is dear Frank? Do tell me. Oh, I am still angry with him for leaving like that to America. Don't be offended, but I never suspected those cowboys actually have an ear for real music. I don't think he sings much anymore. The odd gala, the odd charity event. Anyway, he sends his love. Oh, his love? <laughs> Do you hear that, James? There is someone who still loves me on the other side of the Atlantic. I never said they didn't, madam. What about this other gentleman? What is his name? Borodin? Do I know him? Yes, you once sang in Komkalsgrad. An incredible recital, if the director's account is anything to go by. If you only knew how moved he still is. He's another one who still adores you. I must confess that seeing one of my greatest admirers once more would do wonders for me, but... Ah, oh, my voice. It is so... Ah, I couldn't. Hmm. Sounds like she doesn't think she can sing anymore, which would be a problem. I'm wrapped up in a case at the moment, and because of it I met a certain Mr. Sergei Borodin, director of the Komkalsgrad Industrial Complex, situated to the northeast of here. Ah, oh, I remember that factory. <gasps> oh, a sad city indeed. <laughs> what am I saying? They all were. Madame Romansky, this Borodin is one of your biggest fans. If you could come and sing for him there, it would make one of his biggest dreams come true. Sing? Oh, my poor girl. I have not sung for years. Time has taken its toll. My voice is like the rest of me. <sighs> Faded and wan, like my heart. Oh, aren't you going a bit far there? 
I bet you've still got a great voice. Oh, you are the sweetest cherry, my dear. I am not senile yet, but I look reality in the face every time I look in the mirror. And I can tell you, singing is something I did in the past. Hmm, that might be a problem. I have a feeling the director isn't going to take no for an answer. Also, isn't Arlbat supposed to be further east from Komkolskrat? So, how is that to the northeast from here then? Maybe they meant northwest. Madam Romansky, please understand I would never have come so far to disturb you if I didn't really need your help. I understand, my dear. But my health is failing me, as does my voice. Believe me, no one is sadder than I. That's a problem. Well, at least we can ask uh, about Hans, because I guess she knew him. Strange. I get the impression that Hans Vorlberg turned up here, too. You know Hans Vorlberg? Not exactly. I'm looking for him to sort out this inheritance case. But I've had to snoop around in his past a bit to get on his trail, and I guess he's kind of a close friend now. You knew him, didn't you? Oh, yes. I knew Hans Wollerberg. Do you hear, James? Ah, oh, if you had had the chance to meet Hans. My Hans. Oh, my God. What has become of him? Where is he? As questions go, madam, that one is not without certain complications. I'm sorry, but I have no idea. That's the goal of my mission, to find Hans Varlberg. That's why I have to get back to my train as quickly as possible and to get out of Komkalsgrad. And you cannot find him without the train? The train is one of his last inventions. So is Oscar, the automaton engineer. I get the feeling that the two of them are going to lead me to him. Did you hear that, James? I might see Hans again. I have dreamed so long of meeting my dearest sweetheart again. Oh, if only I could sing. If only I were in Paris, I would ask George for that miracle cocktail. The one that only he knew how to make. Wouldn't I, James? Yes, madam. As you have frequently said, without that famous cocktail, your French tour would have probably been cancelled. I don't understand. An extraordinary tale, my dear. It was December, and it was terribly cold and damp. I had to play the role of Tatiana that evening at the opera. But since the morning, I had lost my voice. It drove me completely mad with worry. I don't know how George, the barman at the Moritz Hotel, heard about my affliction, but he brought me up a cocktail that he had invented. A strange concoction. But it turned out to be a miracle cure. My voice returned to me in an instant. That's amazing. That's just what we need. We're going to mix you up a cocktail. Ah, oh, my dear child. It is impossible. George never told me the recipe of the drink. He loved to keep his trade secrets. He said it made him absolutely irreplaceable. <laughs> Well, I'm going to get George to tell me. He hasn't yet met with my powers of persuasion. Okay. We need to find out a way to contact him then, I guess. Look. Please. You absolutely have to come with me to Comicalsgrad. It's the only way I'm going to get my train back and be able to carry on my journey. Your train? That's right. I've been traveling on this amazing locomotive with this automaton engineer. He isn't a million light years away from your James. Do you hear that, James? And automaton? You have a twin brother? How delightful. And I thought I was the only person alive able to put up with such a peculiar butler. Permit me to express my surprise, madam. Surely the fact that I remain in your service guarantees my uniqueness. Oscar isn't my butler, though. He has a great independence of thought. Sometimes he does whatever suits him. Just like you, James. Isn't that funny? 
Madam, will not be surprised to hear that she is strongly advised not to undertake a journey that, unless I am very much mistaken, will tire her needlessly. James, only one of us will make that decision, and that person is me. I am very curious to meet your automaton, my dear. Where is it? He had to stay with the train in Kalmkalsgrad. The director used his hands for the final touches on his pianist. It's the same pianist that will accompany you when you sing. How quaint. Another automaton. And this one can he even play along with me? Play for me? Ah, oh, why does my voice abandon me so now? You must have had a fantastic life. So exhilarating. Ah, much more than you could ever imagine. I used to sing the finest melodies of the moment in the most fantastic theaters around the world. I have been hailed by kings and courted by princes. Grown men would sink to their knees when they heard the first notes of my recital. My voice could break crystal glass and hearts, many hearts. I'm not surprised. Then one day sickness steals away the gift life has given you. My voice started to betray me. I started to get migraines. My health failed. They sent me here to let the spa town weave its healing spell. I was only going to rest for a month, but then the month became a year and the years get longer. But you look so healthy to me. Oh, thank you, my dear. All right. I'll let you get a bit of rest. Thank you for listening to me. It was a real pleasure, my child. You are a charming young lady, and simply talking to you has warmed my soul. I think we need to convince her that her voice is still good. And it sounds like the way to do that is that cocktail. And, well, we are at a bar. But we don't know the recipe for the cocktail, which is a problem. But she said she was staying at the Murits at the time. And it just so happens we have the phone number for that from the brochure. Which is 464-33643. Hello, Hotel Moritz? The reception here, can I help you? I'd like to talk to Mr. George. He's a barman at your hotel. I'll connect you with the bar. Just a moment. Hello, hotel bar? Hi. I'd like to talk to George, please. George? You mean Mr. George? Uh, yeah. Probably. Uh, he must have been a barman at the Moritz in the 50s. Well, don't want to disappoint you, but Mr. George stopped working here quite a while ago. What was it about? I've been told that Mr. George had a recipe for a fantastic cocktail, and only he knew the ingredients. I absolutely must know what was in it. It's a matter of life and death. I'd love to help you, ma'am, but you see old George? Now, he knew a lot of cocktails. One hell of a barman and one hell of a reputation. He did write down his recipes before he left, but if you can tell me which one you were looking for exactly? Uh, I don't know. There are a lot of them, you say? Yeah. The Paris Peking Shuffle, the Deep Green Secret, Boco Poco, Blue Helena, Red Mambo. Helena. Yeah, that's the one. The Blue Helena. Right. I'll take a look. Blue Helena, you say. Let's see. One measure of vodka, one measure of blue carasso, one measure of honey, a dash of lime and ice cubes. Shake it all together and Bob's your uncle. Perfect. Thank you very much, sir. You have been most helpful to me. Indeed, he has been. Yeah, you're supposed to realize that um, the hotel that Helena was staying in uh, in Paris was, uh, in fact, the hotel in the brochure, and that this number is for that hotel. I guess it is written on the same line, but it's quite convenient that 
that happens to be the only phone number that's written in here. And also, fortunately, um, even though the bartender didn't work there anymore, he still could give us the name of this cocktail, and hopefully that is the right cocktail. It sounds right, though. And yeah, I hope you were taking notes, because I think you can call him again if you need to uh, get the recipe again. But let's see if we can't um, make that cocktail. So we're going to need vodka, blue curacao, a lime, and um, honey. Um, something underneath the bar here. And it seems to be a fridge, I guess, or some kind of cabinet anyway. And it holds a lime, so that's good. And also some honey. I don't know how long this lime has been there. It's got... Oh, it's a lemon anyway. Um, I don't know how long that's been there. Since it's cut in two, I hope not too long. And it looks like the honey is all crystallized. It's all stuck on one side of the jar. That might be a problem. Well, we can try it, I guess. Let's take a look at this bar. This is a weird contraption. Um, there's a bunch of buttons. On, off, I guess. Ice. Milk, I would assume. Lemon. Um, I don't know. And an automaton with a glass, so that's maybe serving the drink when it's ready. And there's a keyboard. Because that's how bars work. They have pianos in them. There's also, somewhat cleverly hidden, a scroll there. And it... Uh, it actually tells us what um, keys correspond to what drinks on the piano bar. So, under the base clef, we have uh, rum, vodka, whiskey, cognac, schnapps, gin, and vermouth. You don't really need to know music all that much, um, because you can just count. It's the second one from the what I'm guessing is C, so this would be D. And then under the treble clef, we have tequila, port, blue curacao, creme de menthe, champagne, red wine, and white wine. So we will need um, bass clef D and treble clef E. To mix this cocktail. And since there's only one octave here, yeah, you use this switch to choose between bass and um, treble. So what we need to do is um, we need a, a shot of vodka, I guess. So that's bass clef. D. That does not seem to be doing anything. Hmm. The problem actually is that there is no vodka here. But we have some. We took it from the cosmonaut. So we can place that in the bar. Oh, and it's still not working. Hmm. Maybe it helps if we turn it on first. There we go. We'd still have had to put the uh, vodka there first, obviously. Uh, then blue curacao, which is uh, treble E. Fortunately, that seems to be in the bar. We don't need to find it. Um, 
let's see. Then we need honey. Which we have, but how do we get it into the thing? I guess these kind of looks like, you know, a beehive. So, try it? No. Problem again, just like the vodka, is that the honey is not here. We need to insert it into the bar. But as I feared, the crystallized honey will not um, pour out of the jar, so that is not working. There's no hint given really here what you need to do, but it does kind of send a reason you need to melt the honey. For do that, to do that, we need a source of heat, which is not here, but we did see a hot tub earlier. Which is on this side. Oh, I guess those are the two day guests we saw, day visitors. I'm sorry to disturb you. Yeah, I think I can thrust with my queen through there. Unless... I can see that I'm disturbing you. Uh, hey, no, 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 checking two moves. Hmm. Maybe I'll squeeze him with my bishop instead. Nothing like a good squeeze from a bishop. Okay, I wouldn't like to disturb you any longer. They seem to be occupied with their chess game. And we can't talk to them. Fortunately, we don't need to. Anyway, here's the hot tub. Hopefully hot enough to uh, melt the honey. Doesn't look like that works. Hmm. I guess it's not very hot right now. There's a valve over here. That's doing something. Yeah, it's starting to steam now, so definitely heated that up. Let's try it again. It worked. Liquid honey. All right. That should work a little bit better. So let's head back to the bar and see if we can complete that drink now. But I think we'll do that in the next video.